So you feel that King Von was evil? Man, they just came and said the man and killed four people. And he bragged about it. He never showed no remorse for his murder. So, uh, uh, so what happened? You're gonna go to jail for battering to a police officer. Why it? Me? Where? Well, and you also? Well, I got everything. Well, at, thank got you got very much. We'll, we'll take I'm it then. I'm in cuffs since I was in a cop. If I go home, it's Valentine's Day. Yeah. The stories of the ghost of Oblock have come to haunt rappers and the entire rap industry today. Wherever King Von's name is mentioned, not everyone thinks of his tracks, crazy story, or too curt to the O. The mention of his name makes rappers quiver and grown men shudder, but not everyone knows why the ghost of Oblock has this effect. Some insider sources who have encountered the ghost of Oblock on the streets of Chicago have agreed to share their experiences about how he has haunted the streets of Chicago. On 6400 Top King Drive, Chicago, lies the most dangerous block that has come to be known as O-Block, including the Black Disciples and the Gangster Disciples. O-Block has become a major name in the rap industry through the influence of rapper Davon Bennett, aka King Von. Where are you from? 64th and King Drive, Chicago, Illinois, Parkway Gardens. Wick City, Toontown, Ketter World, Sheroy Squad, Whitey Gang, Muna Gang, Stretch Gang, City of Heck, and Get It Back Gang are some of the names the infamous O-Block has been called over time. But not many know the true history of how O-Block got its name and status. We decided to find out which block in Chicago has the most shootings, and we discovered it wasn't in Inglewood or the West Side. It is actually the 6400 block of South Martin Luther King Drive, on the edge of the Woodlawn community. Officially known on every block as Parkway Gardens, located on the 6400 block of South King Drive, the block became home of some of the deadliest gangsters affiliated with the Black Disciples set in Chicago. The low-income apartment complex sits on one side of the 64th Street, with a string of businesses, including an auto zone, a food mart, and the Chicago Crusader newspaper crowding the other end. They make it seem like we just so bad, so dangerous. They make it seem like we monsters. We just like normal people. We just a regular day on the streets of Oblock sees young men affiliated with gangs hanging on street benches and crawling in the shadows of street corners, staring down strangers as they walk by. Kids' toys are left in the gardens unattended as mothers hurry down the street and pour their kids into the safety of their homes. Hundreds of security cameras are mounted on every corner of the street, turning to oversee the streets, but none of these cameras have been able to provide evidence for the gang killings that happen on Oblock. It's dangerous out here, man. If they from here, don't come here. Please don't. It's real. It's, it's hectic. 19 people were shot on that block. Before. It's like decent, but it's like, like you just gotta like watch out, you know? Do you guys feel like all the violence shit is overhyped in the media? Yeah, yeah. overhyped for real. Yeah. But having all that violence shit is fun to say. Yeah. So it's not nearly as bad as it is in real life? They think they shoot every day. They shoot like once a month. They don't shoot every day. They don't shoot every day. Parkway Gardens got its name, O-Block, after 20-year-old Odie Perry, who lived on the block, was assassinated on the streets of Chicago. His killer, 17-year-old Ja'Kyra Barnes, a.k.a. K.I., a member of the rival Street 63rd, who was known as the deadliest hitter on her block. K.I. took out Odie Perry as a retaliation for the assassination of her friend, Shandell Tuka Gregory, who was taken out by Odie Perry. The year 2010 marked the beginning of the unending gang wars between 63rd and 64th Street that have claimed hundreds of lives in the past decade. And it all began after a kid named Wooski, who lived on 64th Street, decided to be a member of the Gangster Disciples on the 63rd block, the rivals to the 64th Street Black Disciples. Insiders have revealed that Wooski was encouraged to join the Black Disciples, the gang that was present where he lived, but Wooski refused. Wooski, how you coming? Have a, you back? Is you back though? Yeah. How you doing? You been eating all your no, no, it's okay, it's okay. You been eating all your questions. You been eating your vegetables, fuck. Yeah, that's question. You know I'm happy to eat that shit. How you coming though, fuck? You finna get on the outskirts, so you finna control your city, fuck. No more straight shit. Wooski's failure to be a member of the Black Disciples subjected him to constant bullying and ridicule from the gang members on 64th Street until one fateful day when Wooski pulled the trigger on a member of the Black Disciples. Crazy. It was in a crazy fist fight back then. The boys from Old Block attacked us from 63rd, and Wooski took out Reezy. It's crazy as hell. The BDs was looking out for any GDs. Think about their guns at. 
but not before subscribing to this channel. They say to update on every move their ops made by turning on their post notifications to this channel for all updates on rappers and their gang beef. The assassination of Reezy in 2010 sparked a huge gang war between both streets, with several gang sets from other streets in Chicago joining the war. Such sets like Jairo City, Taiwan World, 600, and Front Street. But when they couldn't take out Wooski, they began eliminating members of the gangster disciples who lived on 63rd Street. It was at this time Odie Perry put out the hit on Took. At about 6.45 p.m. on January 12th, 2011, just a few months after the gang wars began, 13-year-old Shandell Gregory Tuka, an alleged member of the Gangster Disciples on 63rd Street, was assassinated. At a bus stop where he stood, it was believed that Odie Perry carried out this attack on Tuka's life. What's up? So I am in Inglewood on the corner of St. Lawrence and 63rd Street. I'm at the bus stop where on January 12th, 2011, uh, a young man by the name of Shondell Gregory, better known on the street as Tuca, a member of the Gangster Disciples, was shot and killed. He was standing at this very bus stop uh, when uh, some enemies came up and just uh, shot him. Uh, I believe he died on the way to the hospital. According to police reports, Tuca and two other people were waiting for a westbound 63rd Street bus when the gunman walked up and asked everyone if another bus was coming. He then walked behind the bus shelter, pulled a silver handgun, and pulled the trigger at Tuca. Tuca staggered to a nearby trash can after the first hit, but that didn't stop Odie from firing at him. He hit him three more times in the back before leaving Tuca, who passed away on the scene. Everyone on 63rd was mad pissed that Tuca was taken out. He was only a kid. He didn't need to go out like that. After Tuka's assassination, a series of revenge killings happened between the two blocks until Ja'Kyra Barnes took out Odie Perry, the young man responsible for Tuka's passing. At about 11.30 on August 10th, 2011, the day which happened to be Tuka's posthumous birthday, Ja'Kyra Barnes allegedly took out Odie Perry near the Parkway Gardens homes at 64th Street after he sustained a gun wound to the neck. Yeah, we all have a and Vontae use a boy, you was not with the s on too good, boy. Your ass is a lame, boy. What did you come from, boy? Your ass is a goofy to my some Chris with a fuck a little Chris, boy. And the Jeep, that boy. I don't know, man. The word on the street was, K.I. pulled the trigger on Odie. K.I. was bad as hell, man. She was gangster. All throughout 63rd Street, K.I. was praised for assassinating Odie Perry. But while they celebrated, Odie Perry's passing was heartbreaking for the Black Disciples on 64th Street. In a bid to honor Odie Perry as their fallen disciple, the Parkway Gardens on 64th Street was named O Block after Odie Perry. She was also seen as quote unquote a killer of many people, but she was also linked to the death of OD. If you don't know, OD got killed, and that's how O Block was formed. Although Odie Perry's passing was a victory for 63rd Street, it didn't take long before their most feared assassin, Ja'Kyra Barnes, was taken out by the man who has now come to be known as the ghost of O Block, King Vaughn. He liked her as a girlfriend? Yeah, he wanted to be her boyfriend. She just felt like he was trying to set her up and kill her. That's what she told me. She's like, I think he's just trying to kill me. He don't like me. What's the like? It wasn't long before Ja'Kyra's death. At about 3.30 p.m. on April 11th, 2014, a series of gang attacks happened across Chicago, which caused the life of 36 people on that fateful night. One of the people who passed away was 17-year-old Ja'Kyra Barnes, who suffered approximately nine gun wounds before she passed. Ja'Kyra Barnes uh, died last month in April. She was 17 years old. She was killed in the Woodlawn neighborhood uh, in a shooting, and she was shot multiple times. And so the police thought that uh, she was targeted, that she was assassinated, essentially. Years after Ja'Kyra was assassinated, the police authorities released court documents that King Vaughn was, in fact, the person who pulled the trigger on that fateful evening on April 11th, 2014. But for whatever reason, it never made it to court, okay? But if you read the actual document that came up in this Freedom of Information Act uh, uncovering, it basically says that, hey, the person who allegedly killed her was Davon Bennett, a.k.a. King Vaughn. 
the deadliest shooter on O Block, O Block's most feared gangster and grandson are some of the names that have been used to refer to the rapper King Von. Growing up on the streets of O Block, King Von wasn't like every other regular gangster. He had a pretty decent childhood and didn't have a lot of money problems. It was decent for me. I like, let me say it like that. It was regular for me, like, you know, because I grew up here and it's, but when I look at other people, so I'm moving around, I see how other people growing up and how they life here. Like, so it'd probably be hard for them. It ain't the same as I see everybody else. But to me, it's regular. My mom was there, you know, no daddy, stepdad or something. You know, regular, going to school. Ain't a lot of money, but you know, still got little shoes and clothes, man. Ain't too much. But all that changed after King Von lost his father to gang violence at 11. In no time, King Von found himself dabbling in different criminal gang activities. Me growing up, when I got in trouble early, 15 years old, like that, so I ain't never been grown until like right now, because I've been in jail. All the times where it really counted, like, you know, like I ain't graduate high school, man, all that. So when it was time for me to step up, I was already in jail. Mm -hmm. I was already in trouble street activity. At only 16 years old in 2010, King Von was arrested for the first time on robbery charges in Chicago. The rapper, who was only a teenager then, was taken to juvenile boot camp after his arrest. But he had the charges against him dropped. But that was only the beginning of the lengthy criminal record that awaited the rapper in his future life. They locked me up for a robbery, armed robbery and armed contract. This is something you were able to beat back then? Right, they dropped the charge. They dropped most of them and gave me, let me go for boot camp. I was too young to even know What's going on? I just want to get out of jail, so I, uh, give me boot camp. I took that, got out. But that was your first run-in? Yeah, that was the first. You've had other run-ins since then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were some of the other things you ended up getting in trouble for? Um, By 2012, King Von's arrested charges toppled, and he found himself locked up for unlawful firearm possession. On November 21st, 2012, King Von, who had just turned 18, was arrested as an adult with a bond set at $75,000. King Von continued to get in trouble until he caught his biggest charge after taking out Malcolm Stuckey during a gang hit in 2014. On May 29th, 2014, King Von was at a party at 5722 South LaSalle Street, a two-story house divided into three apartments, situated a couple of blocks east of Interstate 94. This location was only three miles straight, west of the Museum of Science and Industry, where a certain Malcolm Stuckey worked. Stuckey had also been invited to this party, where King Von, alongside other members of the Black Disciples, was in attendance. According to the host of the party, Laminda Jones, King Von, who had been there long before Stuckey arrived, had started trouble with some rival gang members who he met at the party. Davon came to my son's birthday party on that day. I knew how he moved. We all know how these kids on these streets move. But we parents can't really do anything. But when I saw him stand down the kids from the other block, I said to him, don't start no mess in my house. And he laughed as he said to me, I'm not on that. After saying that to me, he smiled and left the party. I didn't even know when he returned. All hell broke loose after King Von returned to the party as he showed up with a Smith & Wesson. Just as King Von returned, Malcolm Stuckey drove into the location in the Burgundy Pontiac Grand Prix. And this was where his face Cross with the ghost of Oblock. King Von and his associate, Michael Wade, showed up at a basketball court just across the street from the party, where Stucky and some partygoers were playing a game before returning to the house to eat the food Laminda Jones was preparing. We were on the court playing a game of b-ball when two men pulled up from the alley behind the house. It all happened in a flash. You know, Malcolm just stepped aside to smoke a cigar, and the next we heard was... The rivals who King Von had spotted at the party earlier saw him first and decided to open fire on him and Michael Wade. Von opened fire on his rival and chased him down LaSalle Street where the party was going on, and the crowd saw what had gone down. At the time King Von and Wade realized what happened, Stucky had been gravely wounded in the crossfire, and another man had been injured in the foot. Stucky passed away on the spot while still dressed in his work uniform. It was the murder of Malcolm Stuckey that landed King Von in jail, where he served his sentence of three and a half years. I got charged with it um, when I was 19, 2014, I got, when I was 19 years old, and they let me out when I was like, what, 23. So you were locked up for three, four years? At that time, three and a half years. But before that, you know, I was locked up for 15 months, and then before that, 14 months. Just really my whole teenager. 
that the King Von served his sentence. Chicago rapper Lil Durk took him under his wings to help him build a rap career. Being under Lil Durk, King Von began to make a name for himself by telling his story through rap. He told the story of Oblock, the gang activities, the people he's allegedly assassinated, the types of weapons he carried, and how life was on the streets of Chicago. All right, man, yo, Dirk, introduce this guy right here. I don't know who he is. Uh, King Von, you know what I'm saying? One of the hottest, in, the hottest in Chicago. Yes. For you know sure. I'm saying? Going crazy. Okay. You know OTF. He's OTF? Family. For sure. Yes, man. Now, what's going on with you? I'm vibing, man. Just. King Von continued to spread his story through his music until he was taken out on that fateful night of November 6, 2020. On the tragic night of November 6, 2020, King Von went out partying at the Monaco Hookah Lounge in Atlanta when a fight broke out between his group and affiliates of rapper NBA Youngboy, including Kondo Rondo and Lil Tim. According to insider sources, King Von had picked a fight with NBA Youngboy's affiliates because of the competition between the rappers. Who's clubbing and vibing with Von and 4K Drake popped at the club? I don't know how it escalated so quickly, but I know Von threw the first punch at them 4K D guys. Rapper King Von was caught in a fight with Quando Rondo and his associates, but no one really knows how things got really bad that led to King Von's assassination. Not even rapper Quando Rondo, who was directly involved. While narrating the events of that fateful night, Quando Rondo said, My brother said, no Tim told me, Lil bruh, I'm not about to let you sit in no car and go to sleep. Quando explains, I'm about to sit in here and roll up. But the two brothers had no idea how the night was going to play out for them. The insider sources believe that King Vine only attacked the 4KT guys because of their affiliation with rapper NBA Youngboy. An interview of King Vine barely 24 hours before he was assassinated was proof that the rapper did in fact have issues with NBA Youngboy. On November 5th, 2020, just the day before the tragic passing of King Von, he sat for an interview with DJ Academics where he revealed the true status of his relationship with 4K Trey rapper NBA Youngboy. Although King Von claimed he didn't have any issues with NBA Youngboy, he also said that their issues would only relate to women and internet speculation among their fans. You know what people told me? People told me you and Youngboy was beefing or something like that. You said something about it. What happened, Von? What's going on with you, man? <laughs> they be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same issues. And, 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 and then, you know how the internet will try to make it. Don't tell me I got that. problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the you know, they try to make it like that because it's the internet. You see what I'm saying? Mm. And, then, and then, you know how females is. Females will try to make it like that. It remains a mystery whether King Von was being truthful with DJ Academics at the time, as further investigations have shown that King Von has previously called out NBA Youngboy for his lyrics. While listening to NBA Youngboy's track, Play With Us, on Instagram Live, King was heard saying in a singy song way, You got cap in your raps. King Von's passing was a hard pill for his family and friends, mostly O-Black and OTF members. Many of them shared their grief over his loss on social media, including OTF leader Lil Durk. Lil Durk found out about King Von's passing while on an Instagram Live video. Fans began making comments about the fight at the club and about how King Von passed away. Durk immediately left the Instagram Live video, and the next time he was heard from, he posted a tribute to King Von on his Instagram page. While posting a picture of King Von on his Instagram page, Lil Durk wrote in the post captions, A twin gone. I love you, baby bro. D-Roy. After King Von passed away, the people of Oblock showed their love for him by creating a mural of the rapper on the walls of Oblock. Rapper King Von lives on in this mural across from Parkway Gardens and Woodlawn where he grew up. Around his neck there's an Oblock chain, a nickname for this neighborhood, and the name of the album released shortly before his murder in Atlanta last year. Even after the passing of Lil Durk, NBA Youngboy did not address the situation with King Von. He only went on to diss King Von on his track, Bring the Hook, where he rapped. Oblock pack get rolled up. Murder, what they told us. Atlanta boy, get fold up. The lyrics of NBA Youngboy's track caught the attention of gangsters and members of Oblock who shared a video showing them reacting to NBA Youngboy's song, Bring the Hook. I mean, you got everyone in Block mad at this, man. Why you gonna talk about Vaughn like that? Ain't nobody gonna speak disrespect on Vaughn's name. The Oblock reaction clips showed several people gathered on the streets of Oblock with King Vine's track playing in the background while they burned flags in clothes colored green. The color green is significant to rapper NBA Youngboy. Rapper Lil Durk also shared a reaction to NBA Youngboy's diss track after he came across it. Lil Durk shared a picture of himself sitting next to a canvas of King Von from his Welcome to Old Black album. Lil Durk wrote in the caption of the post, Don't claim it if you ain't do it. You still a... 
Though Durk has continued to face backlash from fans of King Von, who have accused him of not avenging the death of the ghost of Oblak. Fans of King Von have encouraged Lil Durk to slide for Von. But will Lil Durk ever slide for Von? And will the ghost of Oblak slide for Lil Durk if the tables were turned?